For more on this, let's welcome in North Carolina Senator Ted Budd. Senator, thanks for joining us. A fiery speech yesterday, very powerful. Just want to know how you viewed it and how was it received? Well, I think he hit it out of the park. We were so glad to have him there. The sad part about it was that Kamala Harris wasn't even there. I mean, she chose to visit sorority girls in Indianapolis or, or in Indiana, and I think that's completely uh, inappropriate when she denied doing her constitutional duties. But as far as Netanyahu, we're so glad to have him there. He did a great job. One key point that he made out of several was that if we give him the tools faster, he'll finish the job faster. And I think we need to remember that. The Biden administration has delayed sending him the, the things that we do for our greatest ally in the Middle East. And uh, let's remember that they are a democracy. They are the greatest ally that we have in the Middle East. Yeah, you mentioned it. Kamala Harris choosing to go visit with those sorority women in Indiana at a campaign event instead of being there in our nation's capital to greet him on Monday. She wasn't there for that. And she wasn't there yesterday as well. What kind of message do you think that sends to our greatest ally in the Middle East? Well, it's, it's a sign of weakness, it's a sign of distraction, and it's a sign that we don't think much of Israel, who we've had a great 70-plus year relationship with. Um, we've had good uh, relationships uh, through them. They're a great bulwark against terrorism in the Middle East. And they're there uh, on the front line, the tip of the spear in the fight against Iran, which is really the source of every malevolent force, uh, largely in the world, but definitely in the Middle East. And uh, she wasn't there to uh, uh, endorse that relationship. Yeah, number of members, number of Congress members weren't there either. Uh, Netanyahu pointed out the fraternity brothers in your state of North Carolina. We all remember the ones who defended the American flag from the anti-Israel protesters overwhelming college campuses. And we saw what happened. You know, yesterday they took down the American flag, they burned the American flag. Um, and then last night we saw Republicans do the same thing after the State of the Union. American flags, um, they, they put it up. Uh, protesters, w just want to get your thoughts on that because last night President Biden talked about unity, he talked about hope, and he talked about hate. And it really just seems that he's, uh, this administration is trying to divide the party. Uh, how do you feel about that? And talk about the divide in the Democratic Party. Well, I really saw it firsthand yesterday. Um, some of the things which you think we would all be um, supportive of is that being against the atrocities that happened um, in you know, when Gaza, um, when they breached the fence on October 7th, and uh, they killed men and women in Israel innocently. They killed babies. They killed women, uh, men, women, and children. And uh, we couldn't even get the Democrats to stand to agree and stand in solidarity against that sort of thing. So I thought it was absolutely shameful. When it comes to uh, raising the Palestinian flag, I thought that was an atrocity yesterday. Uh, but we need more brave men and women to stand up so that per that's preventative. We need a rest afterwards. We could sure use a lot of folks from Chapel Hill to come up here and defend mm -hmm. our flag in Washington, D.C., because they did a great job a few months ago. And I'm so proud of those uh, men and young women that stood up and defended our flag in Chapel Hill. Yeah, we need more of them. And it was great to see them also at the RNC as well last week. And we heard from President Biden yesterday, as you mentioned, for the first time since he dropped out of this race. Do you think he gave the American people the explanation they deserve? Because he didn't say it was because of his health. He didn't say it was because of bad polling. He didn't say it was because he thought he would lose. He just kind of stepped aside. What did you make of his explanation? Well, he talked a lot about democracy, but for all of that talk from a Democrat about democracy, he sure wiped away 14 million votes for him mm -hmm. to hand it over without a single vote to Kamala Harris. So I think that's um, uh, completely hi hypocritical. And um, it really, he didn't address the issue of cognitive impairment, which was the, one of the core reasons. But really it was because he was losing badly to President Trump, as I believe Kamala Harris will as well. You mentioned Kamala Harris, and, you know, there's polls that come out. She seems to be gaining momentum, especially with the media. The media is loving her right now. What do Republicans need to do to make sure that they get their message out, you know, especially to independents and women, those who seem to be rallying behind Kamala Harris right now? Well, she's in a honeymoon phase, but we need to remember who she really is. We don't have to talk about personality or anything like that. We need to talk about the fact that she is a dangerous San Francisco liberal, and she's made America unsafe, and she's made America unaffordable. Obviously, if Joe Biden hasn't been competent in the last while in the White House, uh, it's been her that's been running the show, and it's been her that's made America uh, the have the challenges that it's had, and that's unsafe and unsecure. And that's really uh, her fault now. She um, owns these policies that have made uh, us all have these challenges the last three and a half years. All right, Senator Ted Budd, thank you so much for waking up and joining us this morning. Really appreciate it.
Thank you.